We can all agree that user testing days can be very exhausting and planning them isn't easy either. I'm going to show you how I prepare and quickly gather insights, saving you time and stress. Hi guys, my name is Chili and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. I'm going to show you a very effective way to run user tests, take notes and synthesize your insights. For those of you who don't know what usability testing is, stay tuned and you'll be a usability pro by the end of this. Make sure you stay till the end of the video for a giveaway. This video is specifically for usability tests. User interviews will have a slightly different setup. If you want me to make a video on this, leave a comment below. So what is usability testing? This is where you watch your users complete a set of tasks on your app or website. It helps you see how users interact with your product. It gives you clear insights on your product's strengths or weaknesses. It helps you understand what's not working and why. This could be for your current product or a new design that you want to implement. And you can see how to improve your product. During a usability test, the moderator asks participants to complete a series of tasks on the product while team members observe and take notes. If you're just getting into UX, it's good for you to try do one usability test. This will certainly help your portfolio stand out from others. You can start with friends and family or stop and test students at your university. Or you can use usability testing website. Most of them are quite expensive, but I found this one, which usabilityhub.com. It offers free tests that are under two minutes long. Two minutes might be a bit short, but it's worth checking out and seeing how you get on. I know that there are intelligent user test tools out there that claim to help you gather insights quickly, but the ones that I've tried personally for me, it's not convincing. Sometimes they misinterpret what the user is saying and categorize it wrong. They don't really capture to the level a human does, especially when you're building complex products. You can't afford to miss those insights. But if you know any good ones you think I should try, comment below and I will do a review. Let's get into it. First thing you wanna do is identify your problem. What are you testing and why? What is the main problem? If you have any data to support this, that would be great. So for example, you'd say from the analytics, we can tell that this percentage of users are not completing the purchase or you've had a certain amount of feedback from your users complaining about a certain part of the website. So this could be a reason to do a user test to investigate the issue. Don't test too many tasks at once. Test each problem separately. This way you are focused and your user is not overwhelmed. Setting a threshold for success and a failure for each task lets you determine if your product's user experience is intuitive enough or not. For example, if you set it to three out of five users, maybe one user mentions something and the others don't mention anything, then for you it's a success. This also helps you prioritize the importance of the problems you find. By prioritizing these problems, you can then choose what you work on first. Next, you'll choose your testing method. Is it going to be face-to-face -face or remote? Are they going to test your current site while you observe or a prototype of a new design? You then need to think about the journey that you'll be testing, especially for a new prototype because you then need to create all the screens. Next, you have to gather your participants. So how many participants do you need? There has been studies done on this and five participants is a good enough number. You usually catch most of the problems. I like to use around six or eight participants, but any more than that, you start to see the same feedback. You're not really going to learn anything new, so it's not really worth it. Your participants should resemble your user base. Use your personas as a guide to choose and screen your participants. I will be creating a video on how to create good personas soon, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Here I have my table of participants. So I have the name, scheduled times, the meeting link of the meeting I've scheduled. It's also good to have to know if they've accepted or not. So you know which participants are definitely scheduled in. If you're using a usability testing website, they usually schedule this in for you. But this is for a manual process if you're finding your own users. Share the schedule table with your team members so that they can sign up to observe. It's good practice to get everyone in the team involved in observing. This includes product managers and engineers. There should only be a maximum of two observers per session so that you don't overwhelm your user. If you don't have any observers, just record the session and take notes later. Next, you're gonna need a discussion guide. You need an intro to introduce yourself and the project to your user. And I usually use something like this where I say, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. My name is Chili, and I'll be conducting your interview. And then I mention my colleagues who are on the call and how they'll be capturing notes. I then introduce the product that we're working on. You don't always have to mention the name, just in case you're working on a very well-known brand, 
you can just say like, for example here, I could have just said it a gym app or a fitness app. You also have to remind them that there's no wrong or right answers and that they themselves are not being tested. I encourage them to be honest. And I say something like, don't hold back. Any negative feedback won't hurt our feelings. It only helps us to improve the designs. And do you have any questions before we begin? If you are recording the session, make sure you ask for permission. And you can also offer for them to turn off their camera if they don't want their face in the recording. Make sure you get the permission for the recording in the recording. For example, I'll say something like, is it okay if we record the session? And then they say yes. And then I press record and then say, we are now recording. Is it okay for me to continue recording the session? And then they'll say yes. Then you need a few pre-test questions to gain more information about your user. It should take like five minutes. These are open-ended questions that you can ask for more details as you go. So, so my intro question is, what's a typical week like for you for fitness? What are your fitness goals and how have they changed over the last few months? How do they normally book classes and what, what times do they like to work out? For this gym app, we will be testing booking classes. It's also good to have a scenario and a backstory to help the user understand the feature you're testing. For this one, I'll talk about how the fitness group has 10 branches in the city and they have access to all of them. And you want to schedule your fitness classes for the week because they book, get booked up really quickly. But some days you're working from home, some days you'll be working from the office. These sort of scenarios mean that you won't be spoon feeding the user what to do next. They'll know that if I'm gonna be at home and at work certain days, I need to change the location. By building this up, this then helps you to take a step back and allow the user to explore your app by themselves. And you know that they have all the important information that they need. This is Myro and this is the setup of the board. As your participants are answering these questions, this is where you're going to add them. I have put in the screenshot of every single screen in the journey. Above here, I've added discussion prompts and questions to remind me as I'm speaking to the user. What you then want to do is have these sticky notes that are color coded. And as your participants answer these questions, during the test, your observers will take each sticky note, red for bad feedback, or if a user is struggling, yellow for anything that's more neutral and green for good feedback. They'll then add them to the board as the user is moving through the app. So as you can see on the sticky notes, you have these tags P1, P2, P3. They stand for like participant one, two, and three. I'll now show you how to prepare them for participant four and five. You just duplicate them and then you go here to add tag. So then now we're gonna add P4. Let's change that color. So now, as you can see, P4 has been added, but we wanna make sure that P3 is not on there. So go back to tag. This is a little bit fiddly. If you select this part, it switches it on and off. But if you select this, it is to edit. So make sure you press the right one. So we switched off P3. And that is how you make sure your post-its are tagged. So when your post-its are added to the rest of the board, you know exactly who said what. It's also good to have emojis there for some quick reactions. And this is where you go to add your emojis. And I have duplicated them across the board for easy access. And here you put any general feedback that is not related to a particular screen. At the end of the test, this is what your board will look like. It will be filled with post-its and a few emojis. And these post-its will be of your feedback. Then next, what you do is you look at the color coding. From a high level, you can see what needs the most attention with the red. And then you move on to the yellows and make sure you look at the greens to see what went well. And then next, as a team, you will then add some black post-its. You take notes of the things you're going to change or trial from the feedback. You can also have the percentage of people who completed the task with no issue or gather percentage of people who had an issue with a certain task. Some changes should be done immediately, like this one here. It's very clear that it's very confusing. And then other changes, for example, here, you have to take some time before you decide to make changes. You have to outweigh the effort to impact, the design and engineering effort to create it versus the impact it will create. There is very little impact for this. You can choose to work on this at a later time when the team is not so busy. 
This is how you prioritize your features in order of importance. The point I'm trying to make is just because you get bad feedback on something doesn't mean you jump and change everything. You can take your time and evaluate if it really needs changing or maybe test it again. You can screenshot parts of this board and add it to a presentation document to play back to the wider business. If you'd like me to create a video on creating research documents or any other topic that you're interested in, make sure you leave a comment below. It's good to make this research board into a template. That way you can reuse it every time you have a user test and this cuts your preparation time. I have linked this Myra board below and you can copy it and use it as a template. So for the giveaway, I'll be giving away a one-to-one -one session every week for the next few weeks. All you have to do is sign up to my mailing list and engage with my content on some of my social platform. Like, comment, share, subscribe. So if you're a designer and need advice on how to level up your career or you're a business owner who needs some UX consultancy, this could be for you. I'll be picking one person randomly each week. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.